All right, what gear do you need for a complete home studio? I'm talking about somewhere that you could record a full live band and handle everything in-house. Which DAW, interface, mics, preamps, outboard gear, monitors, even instruments, I'm gonna give you a complete list of what I would get if I was putting together a legit home studio or project studio from scratch. And you might disagree with some of my choices here, so let's hear it in the comments. All right, you can't record anything without a DAW and you can't run a DAW without a computer, right? So let's start there. I think you should go with a Mac whether it's a MacBook or a Mac Studio or an iMac, any of those are powerful enough to run sessions these days. As long as it's made in, let's say the last five years at least, you'll have no problem there. You wanna have at least eight gigs of RAM, lots of storage for your sessions and your plugins and software and everything. And for me, I want a computer that has a lot of connections. That's why I really liked the Mac Studio that just came out. It's got a ton of USB 3 connections and that paired with the Mac Studio display that gives me four more USB connections, so I love that. And I grew up on PCs, but as soon as I got a Mac for the first time, I like to say I, I became computer stupid because all of a sudden the thing just worked and I didn't have to troubleshoot it all the time. Next up, the DAW. Well, I came up on Pro Tools. There wasn't much else around at that time and I would still vote Pro Tools. And the reason for that is mostly compatibility. I wanna be able to go work at any studio easily and pretty much 99% of Pro Studios out there today still run Pro Tools. And I know that there are pros and cons to every DAW and people get really passionate about this and everyone has their favorite one. And I do 100% believe that you can achieve pro mixes on any of the major DAWs out there. I don't think I'm ever gonna change unless something crazy happens or all the other pro studios out there suddenly switch to another DAW. So for that reason, I'm sticking with Pro Tools. I wanna say this list is not about the best budget studio setup. This is a setup that would last you years and years and would compete quality-wise with any studio out there. But I also value a smart investment, and that means not wasting money. So while this isn't a list of the cheapest gear you could get, there's no waste here. It's only things that you need and nothing more. All right, next up is the interface or the converters. And there are a ton of great options out there these days. Basically, you just need something with 16 inputs because eight isn't enough to record a drum session. I'm gonna give you my two top picks and number one is gonna be the Avid Carbon. And it's not cheap, but since I've chosen Pro Tools as my DAW, the ability to run AIX plugins on the hardware unit, the Carbon itself, with no latency on the way in is absolutely awesome. It's not something that's necessary for mixing, but for tracking, I mean, I used to have an old Pro Tools HD TDM system and the ability to run TDM plugins with no latency while I was tracking, I, I absolutely loved that feature. So I'd love to have that on the Carbon as well. Now, if you're not a Pro Tools user, or even if you are, the next best choice I believe would be one of the universal audio interfaces like the Apollo X8. Both of these interfaces will give you eight analog inputs, but you still need more if you're recording drums. So you need to expand that setup with a secondary interface or converter with onboard mic preamps, something like the Focusrite Octopre. That'll give you eight more preamps that you can connect digitally via ADAT so you can have 16 simultaneous inputs into your DAW. Now I'm not picky when it comes to this unit because these channels are only gonna get used when you're tracking drums. And I would use these channels on things like hi-hat, maybe toms, maybe an extra china or cymbal mic, or maybe a room mic. Basically the parts of the drum kit where the cleanest preamp or the cleanest converter isn't that crucial. All right, let's go to microphones starting with dynamics. I'm gonna recommend that you pick up three SM57s, a D112 for the kick drum. For toms, you can grab a set of three Sennheiser E604s and then grab an SM7B as well. That's gonna cover your kick, snare, and toms with an extra 57 just in case. And the SM7 sounds great on hi-hat and also doubles as your main vocal mic. Now for condenser mics, you need a pair of small diaphragms for your overheads and the AKG C451B are my personal favorite. And they're also gonna cover you on acoustic guitars, strings, basically any delicate or detailed or quiet acoustic instrument. And I'd also supplement that with one more small diaphragm condenser, something more budget friendly like the Shure SM81, just in case you need an extra mic for a china or a cymbal stack or a ride cymbal, or if you wanna try that on hi-hat instead of the SM7. Now for large diaphragm condensers, I'd go for something mid-level like the Audio-Technica 4050s. Personally, I don't use large diaphragm condensers very much, mostly just for a pair of room mics or maybe for group vocals. Over the years, I have bought and sold a lot of expensive LDCs, and I just don't find them as useful as dynamic mics when it comes to recording rock and metal and heavier music. So a decent workhorse pair without breaking the bank like the AT4050 works great for me. After the mics, you need preamps. Now ideally, you wanna have about four channels of nice, high quality preamps. I really love the API 3124 for this. And as you go along, you can add more flavors of high-end preamps if you want. You don't really need more than four channels of high-end preamps. By the time you're choosing between an API and a Neve preamp, 
you're pretty much splitting hairs and they're both gonna get you there. So I'd be using those four API preamps on pretty much everything, and for drums, I would plug in the kick, the snare top, and the two overheads, and then I'd use all the other preamps for the rest of the kit. When it comes to outboard gear, there's really only one thing I need, and it's the distressor compressor. The vocals, snare top, sometimes bass, sometimes acoustic guitar, amazing. It's transparent, it's very hard to screw it up on the way in, sounds great on everything, and it's a great bang for your buck. And I don't have any need or desire for a second outboard compressor. I mix completely in the box, and aside from the vocals, I really don't care whether I'm tracking with compression or not. Especially if I've got the Avid Carbon and I can monitor through plugins with no latency as I'm recording. Next up, you need a controller. You need a set of faders to use while you're mixing and automating, and it also makes tracking a, a lot easier and faster as well. Truthfully, I haven't really found a controller out there that I think is like a 10 out of 10, but as a Pro Tools guy, I would go with the Avid Artist Mix, but pretty much anything that can connect via USB and has eight faders is good to go. Then instruments. Just as crucial, if not more crucial, than the mics and preamps that you use. Now, I used to be 100% a real amps guy. I kept a 5150 and a JCM 800 and a cab with V30s in my studio and used it on pretty much all records. But these days, with the Neural DSP plugins especially, they absolutely crush it. I don't think I would need to have real amps in the studio anymore. But here's what I would get. A bass driver DI pedal for tracking bass. I would have a guitar with an Evertune bridge, which would save you hours and hours and hours in the studio and save your sanity. A decent Fender P bass or jazz bass. A Maxon 808 pedal for guitars. A Little Labs Red Eye, which is going to be your DI box and also doubles as a reamp box. I'd get a Black Beauty snare drum. And lastly, gotta have some sort of tambourine. This is a lot of gear I'm talking about, so I have listed everything I've mentioned in this video down in the description below. Now, do you need all this to make pro records? I mean, you do need the tambourine, but everything else, absolutely not, all right? You can definitely get by on a more minimalist or more budget-friendly setup than this. On the other hand, you could go and spend 10 times more than this and not really move the needle at all in terms of the final quality you get. But I see this as a solid mid-range setup that will certainly cover all your bases for years and give you pro results. As long as you have the skills, you need to invest in your skills first, then you gradually build up your collection of studio gear, making sure that every piece is well thought out and serves a specific purpose. Oh, the last piece I haven't talked about yet is the monitors. And for me, it's an absolute no-brainer. It's gotta be either a pair of old NS10s, or the newer version, the CLA10s. I could talk for a whole other video about why I would choose these monitors, and in fact, I have, so rather than repeat it all here, you can go ahead and check out this video to learn more about why all pro studios have a pair of NS10s, why they translate so well, and how the new version stacks up against the old ones. Check it out.